Welcome to Outside Xbox and some brand new gameplay from Mafia 3. The game's whole thing appears to be defying expectations. It has an unconventional hero, an unconventional setting, and as an open world sandbox, it does things differently from Grand Theft Auto. Here are five ways Mafia 3's open world is totally unique. <laughs> Mafia 3 takes place in a fictionalised version of New Orleans called New Bordeaux. For some reason, the Big Easy is not a region that gets a lot of attention in video games, outside of that one Hitman blood money level with the piano. Never gets old. There's obviously the bustling French Quarter, which is what most people think of when they think of New Orleans, but there's also a huge bayou to the south of the map. Getting around these areas is going to feel dramatically different from your average GTA clone. We've played a section in the downtown area which is more conventional, but crucially, the criminal rackets you break up in each district will be appropriate to the area. So in downtown, that means bureaucracy, corrupt city officials and construction fraud. That's how you end up here in this construction site, deconstructing some people's faces. Wow, going down, boy. You might expect a game called Mafia 3 to be about the Mafia, but it's not really, at least not the Mafia you're thinking of. Previous games in the series focused on the romanticised Italian mob, but Mafia 3 is about taking that Italian mob apart in the city of New Bordeaux. To do that, you'll have to recruit leaders of the Irish and Haitian gangs in the city, a sympathetic CIA agent, and Vito Scaletti, the hero of Mafia 2, who has fallen out of favour with New Bordeaux's Don Sal Marcano. But we're cool with that, there have been plenty of games that stick you right in the golden age of the Italian mob, not least the first two Mafia games. This feels new and fresh. <laughs> Alright, you are still shooting a lot of mobsters, so mostly new and fresh. When I say politics, I don't mean a bunch of grey men in suits having a competition to see who can talk over the other the loudest, so don't worry. Okay, here's the thing, Congressman. When Mr. Durazio made his very generous contribution to your campaign, it was based on promises about those lots downtown. Well, oh, 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 oh. I'm talking politics 1968 style, which means protests against the war in Vietnam and tensions surrounding the African American civil rights movement. As a mixed-race Vietnam veteran, hero Lincoln Clay finds himself right in the middle of both these political issues, and Mafia 3 doesn't shy away from the ugly side of them. The first time you hear the N-word used as a slur against Lincoln in the middle of a video game firefight, it's genuinely shocking. Cocksucker. Hi. Put this thieving piece of shit in a hole next to his brother. And as a reward for successfully sitting through this bit about politics, here's a man getting shot in the butt with a sniper rifle. Yeah, she gave me a hand up. You, buddy. You need to consider it done. Give the people what they want, that's what I always say, which coincidentally is why I'm not a politician. This being the swinging 60s, it wouldn't feel right without an appropriate soundtrack. Mafia 3 is stuffed with classic tracks from the Beach Boys, Aretha Franklin, the Rolling Stones and Creedence Clearwater Revival. We can't actually play you any of them because this is YouTube, but the good news is there's also this awesome blues inspired dynamic soundtrack that ramps up in intensity as the action heats up. Occasionally there'll be a radio in the world playing a tune as you work your way through a mission, and let me tell you, there is nothing quite as weird in this game as executing a bunch of mobsters while the Beach Boys harmonise in the background. One of Mafia 3's priorities is offering you freedom of choice, we're told. When you break up a racket and conquer a district, you can take on individual missions in any order you like, which is pretty standard for an open world game. The difference is often you can just go directly to the racket box, but once you're there you'll end up fighting all of his enforcers and their men in one go. Plus you'll be without the intel you can gain by wiretapping phones, which can be crucial when you're assaulting a stronghold. The other twist is that once you've claimed a racket or district, you have to sit down and dish it out to one of your own three underbosses, Vito from the second game, an Irish mobster called Burke, and a Haitian gang leader called Cassandra. You're not going to be able to keep all of them happy, and your storyline will change depending on which of the underbosses are grumpy with you. Still, this is Mafia, and as this creepy mob lieutenant demonstrates, there are ways of dealing with people who step out of line. You know how many of my men he killed? 
Yes. There you go, some gameplay from Mafia 3, an unexpectedly original take on an open world crim sim. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments and like and subscribe for more from Mafia 3 on Outside Xbox. See you next time.